I know you've seen lots of people say fusion is this limitless energy source and it's just around the corner, a brighter future will soon dawn for everyone, but that's not this video. I don't know when we're going to make it happen, but I'm still hopeful about it. See, I do this thing where I read the news like I'm watching a lottery drawing. Maybe today will be the day and all of my problems are solved. I think that's setting myself up for disappointment. Instead, let's look at the more technical problems and ask how far along we are to solving them. See, unlike renewables, fusion could provide baseload on-demand energy. It doesn't produce nuclear waste like nuclear fission, and it's exciting like a space exploration launch or fireworks. It's, it's just neat. People have said that fusion is 30 years away and it always will be, but I don't think so. A lot of the problems have been solved. Progress has been made. It's not here, but it's still fun to look at the progress and the different solutions that clever people are trying today. Fusion didn't have to take this long. I know it bothers some people to talk about politics, but, but look at this. This is a failure of vision. We need more. We need more science. We need more fusion. We need more research in general. Energy should have been a solved problem in 2005. We could be so much farther along, but we're not because lobbyists, science doesn't have good ones. But I digress. You gotta stay hopeful. Nothing is as hope-sucking as politics. This video is about fusion fuel. Fusion fuel is potent. There's enough fusion fuel to run fusion forever if we can make it work. But there are lots of reasons why fusion is hard. It's not like in the movies, like when Doc Ock had to restrain the fusion reaction in Spider-Man 2. That's maybe a little more like fission. In nuclear fission, a chain reaction produces heat, and the challenge is to control the reaction. Fission is like this dog that wants to run on the treadmill. It wants to go. Fusion is more like trying to get a lazy cat to run on a wheel. It's hard, but it's not impossible. It's definitely not just theoretical. Farnsworth fusers are straightforward enough that a high school student can construct one. A 12-year-old kid with very supportive parents built one. And of course, there's always the fusion bomb. So it can work, there's no question. These home-built fusion reactors use deuterium fuel, which is naturally present in water. They produce energy primarily as neutrons though, which is not ideal for a power plant. Neutrons can activate the wall of the reactor, making it mildly radioactive. To be a practical energy source, the reactor needs to use those neutrons to make steam, use the steam to make electricity, pay back the running cost of the reactor, which is a lot of power for these plasma-based reactors. And then the energy cost of enriching deuterium has to be played back as well. And then the leftover can be sent to the grid. Deuterium fusion has never produced remotely enough energy to actually do that. But there are other fuels. The National Ignition Facility, or NIF, has produced net energy from their reaction. One unit of energy into the reaction produces two or three units of energy out. And that's really good. NIF is using a higher yield fuel called tritium. Now, this reactor is still being used purely for research purposes. The NIF reactor is not suitable for steam production. It runs one shot at a time. It uses these little fuel pellets. It doesn't even try to collect the energy. The ITER is getting closer to a practical reactor. The International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor is being constructed as a research reactor designed to prove that a deuterium tritium fusion reaction could be used to build a power plant eventually. The DT reaction looks like this. Tritium is not natural. It's a synthetic isotope only available from our own nuclear reactors and it decays over the course of about 12 years. It's also quite radioactive, so instead of explaining how the reaction works, I'm just going to talk about where the fuel comes from and how it differs from other power plant proposals. DT fuel is the fuel of choice because it's the easiest fusion reaction we know of. It requires the least energy input, and after the fancy plasma reactor makes heat, the rest of the process is the same as any coal or nuclear power plant. Neutrons heat water to steam, a turbine makes the electricity, electricity used to run the reactor, and there needs to be enough left over to refine more deuterium, and the rest can be sent off to the grid. But that's only half of the fuel. Where does the tritium come from in the DT reaction? The good news is that you can use the same neutrons to generate tritium, but it is in short supply, so this needs to be worked out as a practical problem for any DT power plant. But there are some startups that are trying to simplify all of that. Helion is one of them. They're making a smaller reactor that avoids tritium and neutrons and steam. They use helium-3, a fuel at the center of that sci-fi movie Moon. Helium-3 is fairly abundant on the moon, it turns out, but that's not the most practical place to get your reactor fuel. Famously, the moon is hard to get to. If we could get it from the moon, we could probably get as much with one trip as the tritium we produced in the entire course of human history. 
Helium-3 has some real advantages, though. The helion reactor fuses deuterium with helium-3 to make helium-4 and a proton. Unlike neutrons that come out of the DT reaction, these products come out as high-energy ions. Moving ions, unlike neutrons, are basically already electricity, so there's no need for a steam turbine. That could make a much simpler and cheaper power plant. Just slow down the ions, get electricity out. But you still have deuterium in the reactor, so you do get some DD side reactions, and those do produce some neutrons. Now that's a curse and a gift. On one hand, you have to deal with generating the reactive neutron activation products. Those are mildly radioactive. On the other hand, you can use those neutrons to make helium-3, the rare fuel you can't do without and that is otherwise mostly available on the moon. Neutrons can cause lithium to split into tritium, which decays eventually into helium-3 over the course of a few decades. So that's the proposed helion fuel cycle. But it could get simpler. Tri-alpha energy is a startup building a reactor that is going to get rid of all the neutrons. They take boron-11, a natural isotope of boron, and hit it with protons, the natural non-heavy form of hydrogen that is super abundant. When those two react, they make three helium ions. They convert those hot ions directly into electricity. It's a once-through fuel cycle, no neutrons, no radioactive isotopes. But unfortunately, a reaction is about ten times harder to run. It requires a lot more energy in, which remains a big challenge. So I don't know who's going to get there first. In terms of fuels, the proton boron 11 is definitely the best. In terms of reactions, I think Helion has a lot to offer. These startups are moving really fast. The NIF had the first net energy gain from a fusion reaction in 2022, so other than weapons, of course. So we're really at about the Chicago pile stage. If you saw Oppenheimer, and you should, it's great. It was the scary graphite reactor under the football stadium. Going from that pile of uranium and graphite to a practical reactor was a hard thing for people in the 20th century to do. These startups have really rapid timetables, and that has me hitting refresh every day, hoping for that big story. But I'm a scientist, I'm in the trenches, it rarely works out like that. Most of the time it's a gradual process, lots of iterations, but it's still fun to watch and speculate. It's amazing how many problems they have solved to date. The deuterium-tritium problem is definitely one that people have good plans to solve, and some people have some great plans to get around it entirely. Can you imagine neighborhoods powered by these reactors? Anyway, are you interested in hopeful science stories? Do you have questions you'd like to see answered? So drop me a link in the comments. Uh, send me an email or voicemail with the link in the description. If you like this, you can see my last video where I gave my favorite science stories from 2023 shout out. And if you don't want to miss my next video, you can subscribe or sign up for my mailing list at peterallenlab.com list. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.